Next we come to stock options and I'd say this is the most testable segment. Stock options need to be reported at fair value. Accounting rules require the valuation of options using models. Now the options that employees get might not be traded in the market and if there is no fair market value available then we use models such as the Black-Scholes model or the binomial model to come up with the value of options. This is something you will see in detail when you do derivatives but at a very basic level there are several variables that impact option prices and those variables are shown here. Since we are generally dealing with call options so here's how you can think of this. We have an option pricing model and these are the various inputs to the model. The model will give us an option price. Of these inputs, the only one that is completely objective is the exercise price. So an employee might get options with a strike price of 25. So there is no ambiguity here. But with these other variables, there is some subjectivity. So in coming up with the option price, we need to assume a share price volatility. The higher the volatility that we assume, the higher the value of the call option. So if a company wants to show a high expense, it can increase this assumed volatility. If a company wants to show a low stock option expense, then it can assume a relatively low volatility. The estimated dividend yield on the stock is another subjective variable. The higher this estimated dividend yield, the lower the value of the call option. The risk-free rate also has an impact on the call option price, though this is not a very strong relationship. If the risk-free rate is higher, the call option is a little bit higher. This is the call option price. Estimated life of the option. So the longer the life, the higher the value of the call option. So at this stage, just remember these relationships. You will understand them better when you do derivatives. From an exam point of view, you might see something like this, that in 2014, a company assumed a volatility of 15%. And then in 2015, if the assumed volatility goes up from 15% to 17%, then what will happen to the estimated option price? And the answer here would be that if this volatility number is going up, that means that the option price is going up. In other words, the expense is going to be higher. When a company grants stock options, there are several important dates. One is the grant date. This obviously is the date when the options are being granted. The vesting date, this is the date when employees can first exercise the stock options. So if an employee is told that he can exercise the stock options after four years, then four years is the vesting period. And the date four years later would be the vesting date. After the vesting date, the employee can then exercise the options. The compensation expense is allocated over the service period. So if the value of options being given, let's say is 100 million, and those options are based on a service period of four years, then we allocate this expense equally over the four years. Here is an example of what we are talking about. A company awards 1 million stock options to its executives on 1st July 2015. The estimated cost of each option is 0.5. The options require a service period of four years after the grant date and before vesting. What is the stock option expense for 2015? So do this before looking at the answer. Here is what you should get. We have a million options times 0.5. Here the fair value of the options is given and then we divide by four because the service period is four years. So every year, the amount would be 0.5 million divided by four. And then since these options are being granted in the middle of 2015, and we want the allocation for the second half of 2015, we multiply by half. So the expense for the year 2015 
is going to be 62500.